You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to beg because I am a thief. Cause every good and perfect gift comes from the Father who I Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome to When Christmas Speak Talk Radio. I'm Reverend Ray. Amen. Today's broadcast is called The Bread of Life. Uh, Reverend Roberts should be joining me in a little bit, but we're going to continue on what we were talking about earlier on Friday. We started talking about uh, um, about Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verses 16. This time we're talking about the throne of grace. Amen. We're talking about the throne of grace. And what it says, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need, in the time of need. So we're going to go ahead and get started in a minute. I just want to go ahead and let you know about what we got going on. Don't forget on tomorrow, Apostle Shirley will be with us for the first Monday of August. I thought I believe July is gone. Uh, so she'll be with us tomorrow at 7 p.m. Of course, his about the grace and ministry for us to win is Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the finish work with, with Reverend Pat Randall. Pastor Pat Randall, it's Thursday at 12 noon. Uh, Friday night, Joy, amen, will be at 7 p.m. All right, and that's the first and the, the first, the second, and the fourth Friday. All right, the Bread of Life, amen. The, uh, next Sunday will be the, uh, the, the first Sunday, amen. And uh, the Bread of Life is the first and the third Sunday at 7 p.m. Shout out to change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. A monthly broadcast, like, a four, like I said before, Lifeline with Pastor Stella Jones will be tomorrow, the first Monday in the month at 7 p.m. The Boat in the Beautiful, the Reverend Lobina Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham is every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with Evangelist Lewis McElwain is every third Monday of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m. Uh, marriage Takeover, the body of one, Pastor Eric and Pastor Tamika Thompson, it's every fourth Sunday at 7 p.m. Three, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk with myself and Tyrone, Cleophis, and Brother Elston. It's every second Sunday at 7 p.m. And we with the brothers, we have some serious conversations. Amen. And Midday Glory Prayer with Reverend Gwen Dixon. It's every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Amen. Now, this is a... a a uh, free conference call. The number is seven one two seven seven zero five five zero five. That's this code is seven three two four nine nine. Matters of the Heart Singers Ministry. Amen. With a gr- group of singers getting together, and we have a serious discussion too. We have a good time with the singers. Ministry. It's every third Friday at seven p.m. Switching up to the truth is every second and fourth Monday at eight p.m. with uh, with uh, um, Minister Carmen Booker. Amen. Um, just wanted to write you know, real quick that a lot of the information that we're talking about right now can be found on our website. If you go to winchristspeak.com, you find a lot of information on what the different hosts. We are in the process of updating our website for more information and, and trying to do some other things. If you have an interest in um, sowing a seed or donation into the ministry, you can do that on the website. We are listed as a 501c company, and uh, we are in good standards. We appreciate the donation, because what the donation does is overset some of the costs and everything so that the ministry can go even further. Right now, we've been, uh, we have a listing base in over 140 different, country, uh, different countries, so we are pleased about what God is doing. It's not about us, but it is about the Holy Spirit, so thank you for that. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and open up in prayer. I see the Reverend Robert has joined us. So I'm going to go, oh, go ahead and open up in, in prayer. Father God, we first come today just to give you thanks, thanks for your many blessings and your many grace, God, and your many 
that you have done in our life. Thank you for a new day, a day that we have never seen before, that day that you you, you have kept us through, God, our ups, our downs, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, how you just kept us, God. So we give this broadcast to you, God, and say, Holy Spirit, have your way. God, you speak, Lord, so the people may be blessed or delivered or or. Or, or whatever that's needed. You know what the body of Christ is in need with today, God. You speak, Lord, and somebody might cry, oh, what must I say? What must what must this what must this say? What can they do to be saved, God? We realize that we can't do this journey by ourselves. We need you, especially in this time and season that we're living in, God. We need you, Lord Jesus, because the the, the hearts of men and women have gone wax cold in some situations, even the church, God. So we pray and ask for forgiveness of anything, sins of commissions and sins of omission, God that was not pleasing to you, that we might become truly the salt, light, and power that you have designed us to be, God. We pray today, God, that you might come into our heart and make those hearts that are stony on flesh again, God, that we might feel the way that you feel and see the way that you feel. Help us with our eye gate, our ear gate, our mouth gate, God, and whatever our hands you touch, allow it to bring glory to your name, God. We want to represent you in truth. Jesus. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. And the only way we can do that, Lord Jesus, is that relationship with you, not by works, God, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. And Reverend Robin, how are, you, are you with us? Yes, I am, Reverend Ray. Bless God. I pray all is well with you and all of our listeners out there that the joy of the Lord continue to remain your strength. Amen. 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 And thank you, Reverend Robin, for joining us and everything. And um, again, um, I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, I, I was trying to, <laughs> I have to confess, I was trying to read you out of it. And everything. <laughs> but the uh, Holy Spirit. And he was with let me start there. Well, let me just go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and, and start this because I didn't think that we were finished with it and everything. So I wanted since I mean uh, the, the, the 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 spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, and sometimes we gotta press through, no matter what we feel or what we go through. So I'm grateful for having uh, Reverend Robert as being a part of my life. And um, she is my friend, and she also is my cousin, and I appreciate everything that she does. Amen. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I want to. What I want to do, I want to go ahead and read that. Uh, see that all of the scriptures come from um, Hebrews chapter four again, and I think I'm going to begin trying to figure out because I can't read. I think I'm gonna start at fourteen, uh, Reverend Robin. Okay, because um, Hebrews chapter four, fourteen through sixteen, they started tying again together about Jesus being the the uh, the highest and everything. And I, and I guess the first question that I have to ask is that as a, as concerning the mercy and how did the mercy seat, uh, come about? So yeah, just bear with me. So Hebrews chapter four, verses fourteen through sixteen, it says, "Seeing then." Seeing that, that we have great a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hope profession. For we are a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Was in points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. In other words, Jesus came and he was not without sin. Let us therefore come both into the grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time when we were talking about let us and um, and come boldly in the day we're dealing with the throne of grace. There is a there's a request and uh, there's also the commandment those things that are being shown and everything. I want to do it this, okay, I want to go ahead and read Hebrews chapter 9 um and I'm going to probably skip around a little bit, but it deals with what was taking place um, as far as Jesus being the high priest and everything like that. And uh, Reverend Rob, you can jump in any time because I'm, I'm <laughs> you can jump in any time if you like, okay? But uh, so Hebrews chapter nine, 
I'm starting to say verse one. The Hebrew of Paul says he didn't really. The first covenant had also ordinances of divine services in the worldly sanctuary. But there was a tabernacle made. The first therein was the candlestick. He's talking about the, the ten of tap, tabernacles and everything. With the candlestick and the table and the shoebread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second year, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the, the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with the golden wearing with the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod, their bundle, and the tables of the covenant. And over in the cherub and over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat, of which we cannot now speak particularly. It says, now when these things were thus uttered, the priest went away into the first tabernacle, uh, accomplishing, talking about the high priest, the service of God, but unto the priest with the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, and for the errors of the people, the Holy, the, the Holy Verse 8 said, the Holy Ghost thus signifying that the way into the holies of holies was not yet made manifest, while at the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, and which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did, did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. In other words, they, this was men that was going behind it, and says, not only in meats and drinks and divers, washings and carnal ordinances imposing them into the time of reformation, but Christ being come a greater and more perfect tabernacle. In other words, he didn't come through uh, through men, but perfect tab- tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, not of this flesh, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered into once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. He was the ultimate high priest. He was the last high priest. For if the blood, blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifers, sprinkler of unclean, uh, um, sanctified purification of the blood, I read that very quick, how much more said the blood of Christ who wrought who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He is the one that allows us to go <laughs> before the, the, the grace because of Christ. And that by, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they were all called might receive the promise of eternal um, inheritance. For where a testament, there must also be the depth of the testament. For a testament, forth after men are dead. This is of no strength at all while the tester, tester liveth. Where neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Amen. It says, uh, 19, I'm almost done. But when Moses had spoken to the priest after all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the whole people, saying, This is the blood of the testament that God has enjoined unto you. Amen. And the more he sprinkled with the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels. Yeah. Amen. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus being the last sacrifice of being the high priest. To, did all those things that symbolizes in the Old Testament. He became that, and he was also the high priest. You know, he was the Lamb of God. You know, he was all of those things. Uh, verse twenty four says, "For Christ is not entered place made with hands, which are figures of the truth, but into heaven itself. Now appear, now to appear to the presence for God for us." You know, he appeared in the presence. So he's our mediator. He's a he's our go to. He allow us to go behind the veil and everything. He allow us to be in that place and everything. And it's all because of Christ. And we are grateful for him being um, our, our our high priest. We're grateful uh, for us being able, um, Amen, to um, come both unto the throne of grace. We're able to. to be we will have a command to come a bold to the throne of grace, and then we'll become that we might obtain mercy, <laughs> that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time 
of need. They're great to help in the time of need. Amen. I want to uh, read one more scripture for you, and this comes out of Hebrews chapter 2, verses 17 and 18. It says, Wherefore, in all things, it behoove him made like to his brother, like about Christ, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in, in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are not tempted. He became us, the final high priest, man, so that we can come before God, so that we can stand before his presence and everything. He loved us that, that, uh, that much that he, that, that he was willing to die cross for us. You know, he loved us that, that much that we might be able to come boldly. Before, we couldn't come boldly. We couldn't come with our head lifted up and everything before the throne of grace and everything. You know, the scriptures talk about somewhere that uh, that uh, we couldn't see the face of God during that time unless we die. But because of Christ, you know, and because of the death of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, you know, we now have come voted. The scripture says that um, when Jesus died, that the, the temple, was, the veil was rent in two and everything like that. So there was no need in everything for the high priest as, as a forward. And I know that a lot of Catholic believe that we got to go to the priest to confess, but we don't have to do that anymore. And I'm going to probably get in trouble with that, but I'm telling you, we don't have to do that. We can go directly to Jesus Christ. You know, we can go directly to Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So that's what I got for the, the, the throne of grace, and I, I do have some other things, but I want to give Reverend Robin an opportunity to, to expand or correct or whatever she feels that she has and everything um, about the throne of grace. But, I mean, I would just, you know, I'm still just mesmerized about the throne of grace and everything like that. I'm mesmerized. About, maybe I should ask Reverend Robin and let her talk for them about what exactly, what did she consider to be the throne of grace? What is the throne of grace? Well, well, bless God. Um, I think you've touched on so many um, important aspects of the throne of grace. Um, but I'm telling you, the throne of grace, the throne of um, the mercy, the mercy seat, all of that is God's love. It is his love uh, for the people and, and for mankind, his creation. It all is a reflection of how much he loves his people and and not just those who are currently his people, but for his all of mankind, all of the creation, you know. And it is it is nothing but the truth. And you know, I pray that everyone listening will b- believe it or get in touch with it. But no one on this earth loves any of us as much as God loves us. Mm. You know, there we we will all encounter times and and situations and circumstances or into a dark place where no one can help us but God. And through all that Jesus has done, we have an immediate access to, to God, just as Reverend Ray has, has said. And I'm going to tell you, like I say, it's all love. You know, I can tell you one thing that I'm sure is that this is the greatest love statement that there can be. Amen. Reverend Robin, if you could hear me, you might have to dial back in because it looks like I uh, I lost your your volume. Okay. Amen. Uh, and unless you do that, we're gonna wait for you to call back in. But I want to just continue. Amen. To uh, to uh, talk about this um, grace. Amen. Uh, we can talk about this grace and this mercy seat. Amen. 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 It's great. It's faithful. Amen. Let me just do this. Let me just send out a message real quick. God is and as he, he's faithful when I was um, looking at some some of the scriptures and everything for um, the, um, the mercy seat uh, and, it, and talk about grace is the mercy one of the things that I uh, I found out and then that really blessed my heart was 
about that came out of um, Lamentations, Amen. And and it said that it is the is the Lord's name that we are not consumed because His compassion faileth not. A new every morning, great the faithfulness, great is that faithfulness. This my report says my soul, but I hope in Him. For I said the Lord is good unto them that waited for Him. For the soul seeketh Him. Amen. And uh, thou. Faithfulness. Amen. And I'm, amen. Actually, that was coming to Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 25. Amen. Let me just check on Reverend Gibson, going back in. Amen. Maybe, maybe I have this in Reverend Rob, are you with me? Yeah, sometimes technology <laughs> does all day. You know, but we're gonna we're gonna bless God and make sure it's not on our end. So we do a couple of tests, but it's our faithfulness, God. You know, great is our faithfulness. You are not on our end. So we do a couple of tests, but it's our faithfulness, God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, you know, yeah, well, this is a good word because I'm not trying to get this out. But, you know, I, again, when I think about this, as the Robin said, the throne of grace, uh, the, throne, the throne of mercy that God has for us, and, 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 and we should, we're, we're, we're in a different place than what the, um, the other, the Israelites were, who was Moses and had because of Christ, you know, and, uh, we're just different, man, and we can be more grateful um, now because we 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 can go behind it, go to the mercy seat. We can go behind the veil and have that relationship with him, man, and, and talk with him, man, and and, um, and he and he'll talk back to us through the Holy Spirit. He would talk back to us, and then, you know, and people always find that um, uh, uh, sometimes we're confused about whether God speaks. God speaks. He speaks. Not only do many different ways for us. Uh, Reverend Rob, I think I got you back. Amen. I yes. lost you there for a while. You might have Amen. Broke up. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, again, I'm, I'm, I think that this, this word need to go forward. <laughs> Be back with that technology and things like that. I don't know why you got dropped and stuff like that, but um, we're put to what God is doing and everything like that. So the one is going to turn it back over to you in a second. Okay, Reverend Robin. All right. But one of the scriptures that I was reading from, uh-huh. amen, it was it was coming from, um, I just said it. Let me go back to it. From Lamentations chapter 3, verses 23. It is the Lord's mercy that we assume because his compassion fell. They are new, every greatest faithfulness. You know, he's the greatest of first. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that worship him, to the soul that seeketh him. Great is thy faithfulness. You know, it's the Lord's music that, that we are not consumed because his compassion is still not, you know. With his compassion was still not talking about that, that earlier, that how God loves us. That's why I can come to the throne of grace, yeah? and that's why we have the mercy because God's love for us is good. As if you continue as you, where you left off with your thought process, and as you could because you probably were still talking while um, you, when you got cut off. But as much as you can. Oh, amen. Well, we're we're gonna continue. I'm not quite sure where I dropped off, but I just mm-hmm. want to. Um, kind of pick up with us uh, moving forward to embrace this great love that God has given unto us. Because if we were to read in Romans 5, Romans 5 tells us um, that uh, until the law, sin was in the world, and sin being in the world being in us, you know, I'm adding that in. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. 
And nevertheless, it says, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him to, to come. Um, so it, it's like once Adam sinned, sin became the nature of all men. Just like, you know, the nature of the, of the course of what who you are and, and what we do, it's the nature. It's the nature of man. And, you know, it's in man. You know, it's just like it's the nature of man to need to eat. It's the nature of man who, that needs sleep. It's the nature of man who who needs to be loved. You know, it is the, the, the nature of man to have so many things that are just innate within them to do. And it is the same thing with the sin. The sin is basically just with man, and it's within man because of the fall. And so if we look at it in that regard, as opposed to looking at it as that I'm I'm not so bad, I do this, you know, I feed the poor, I give money, I'm, I'm nice to people, my morals are good. It has nothing to do about that. It's about that innate nature that is in, it is that sin nature that is in all of man that God has to first deal with in order to be reconciled to man. And Reverend Ray was talking about the tabernacle, and the tabernacle represented the first time since the fall that God was coming back so that he could dwell with his with his creation. He had, it had said in the scripture, he says, I would be, um, they would be my people and I would be their God. He wanted that reconciliation. He wanted men to be back into a good place with him. And that was done, you know, it began to occur. And all of the tabernacle things that, that Reverend Ray had referenced in Hebrews were all just the foreshadow of what Jesus would come to accomplish in the tabernacle. And if we were to read in, in Romans 5, um, I'm not sure if I read that, but in Romans 5 it said, but God commended his love toward us. Isn't that awesome? It is the same as, you know, this commended of love began with the tabernacle until it got to to its culmination in Jesus, that he gave his only begotten son. But he begins to commend his love to us. Even while we're sinners, he commends his love unto us. And it said here in verse 11, Romans 5, 11, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received received the atonement. Now when we look back into the tabernacle, that atonement occurred during that time as a way to begin to totally restore man back unto God at that ark and at that throne of mercy. You see, we first we're talking about the throne of grace, but you have to first know that first there was the throne of mercy. It was at that place of throne of mercy where God did not impart unto men what man deserved. It was at that throne of mercy, which is the mercy seat which covered the ark. And the ark, you know, represented the preservation of life for man. And, you know, and at that place, it was, and, and Reverend Ray has spoken on it in, in saying that we now have a high priest who was able to go behind for us. But during that time, it was the priest, the man, the priest that, that went back there, and they went there with, not without blood, and they went there and they atoned for the sins of men. And that atonement of the sin kept the Israelites in a good space with God. You see, but that atonement was just that. It was just an atonement. It could not do any further. And if we look at, you know, the mercy seat, if we were, we don't have time to go into all of the details of the mercy seat, but the, at the mercy seat, at God's throne where he dwelt between the cherubim and where the mercy seat was, which was his throne right there, the throne of mercy, that is where um, all of the, the sin was covered. You know, and, and Reverend Ray had, had read, you know, somewhere, or I've read somewhere that that's where sin was not imputed until without the law. You see, but inside where that mercy seat where God's throne was, inside that ark in which that mercy seat covered, there were the tablets of law in there. There were in there the, the, the manna that he had sent down. There was in there the the, the 
uh, rod of Aaron that budded. You know, we have all of those things that were there inside that mercy seat that covered all those things. And, and the priest went back there yearly, once a year, with blood to, a, to go in to get atonement, not only for themselves, but for the people. You see, and it was at this time where God was commending his love towards man. And the most one of the I think is the bless one of the blessed parts about the tabernacle and what it was God came step by step. If you were to begin to read the building of the tabernacle, you would see that it began with the holy of holies. It began to where God would come and dwell with man. And it worked its way back out to man. So God came and he worked himself back out to man to show man the steps that he needed to take to come back into God. And that is so awesome. That is the greatest, one of the, the greatest love message. That's the greatest love statement and declaration that there is. It's that I love you so much that I want to save you from death. I don't want death to have a hold on you. I want to get out that thing of intimacy between us so that we can have a life eternal together, you know, so much so that everything in the tabernacle was reflective of Jesus coming in to fulfill everything that needed to be fulfilled so that man could be reconciled unto God. And Jesus, you know, as Reverend Ray has read in Hebrews, he went through there once, you know, and the veil was broken, and now we can all, we can come boldly. We don't need to come through a man. Jesus is now our mediator. He is the one who now sits before the Father and pleads our case because he is our covering. When God sees us, he doesn't see us. He sees the blood of Jesus, which we are being covered in. That is the power of that blood that he only needed to shed it one time for us. He only needed to go back there one time for us that we are now able to be reconciled unto God. We are now able to be one with God. And it is an awesome thing, you see, because when we were once sinners, By our accepting and believing in Jesus Christ, we are no more sinners. If you know and understand to the fact that that nature that was in us as a sinner, Jesus has gone down and he's broken down that wall of petition. You know, it wasn't as it were for for the Israelites who went in and they were atoned for once a year. But you see, with Jesus, his blood, his blood is able to go forth and even purge the consciousness that we may have of those things that are in the sin nature, that we don't truly have to have that sin nature. If we were to just give all over unto Jesus, he would purge our minds of dead works. He would cleanse our conscience. He can give us the same mind in which he has, where we would want to that love, that same love, we recognize the love that he gives unto us, it will be the same love that we want to return unto him. And knowing that we have everything that we need in Jesus, everything we have in Jesus. And if we were to actually go and do the entire study of the Ark of the Covenant, we will see how Jesus came in and totally blended and came in touch with humanity. And that's why the scripture says there is not one thing that that he is not in tune and in touch with what man goes through because he came and he walked as man. So he had the same temptations, the same things that faced him, but yet he was able to overcome. So wherever we may find ourselves, we can go to that throne of grace. You see, because once Jesus went back there, that mercy seat became a throne of grace because it is Jesus who will be given the judgment on us. He says he's left all judgment to his son. You know, so now we are covered by Jesus. So when we go before Jesus, when we go to that throne of grace, the throne of mercy turns into the throne of grace. And when we go before that throne of grace, we get things as opposed to with the throne of mercy, God doesn't give us what we deserve. At the throne of grace, Jesus gives us everything 
that we don't deserve. It's such a, a, a difference now because we have a way we can go there with someone who is in touch with every infirmity within our bodies, everything that we may go through, any thought process that we may have, any hopelessness, any feeling um, abandoned, any of that. There is not one thing that anyone on this earth has gone through, will go through, or, or may have gone through that Jesus is not in tune with enough to be able to sit, as Reverend Ray read in, in Hebrews, to be our mediator before the Father. He can he can be there and say, but Father, I was with him. You don't know what that feels like, being wrapped in that body and feeling these things. You don't understand the, the temptation. You don't understand how, how strong the temptation. But, Father, I was in that flesh. I know what it feels like. I know those things are, are unpleasing to you. But the flesh, Father, the flesh, Father, is just it's overwhelming, Father. Have mercy. You see, he's coming to extend the grace, and he's asking God to extend his mercy towards us because he's covering us, covering us before the Father in prayer. He is not only is the Holy Spirit interceding, but the but the our brother Jesus is interceding for us, knowing and having a complete understanding of where we are. You're talking about love. That is a love that we would never find here on earth. That is a love that says, I'm going to love you all the way, that I'm going to love you, that you supersede death. Not only am I love you, that you supersede death, that when you supersede death, I've already gone and prepared a place for you so that when you come to where I am, you don't have to worry about having anything. I have everything prepared for you. And even until you come, just as that manna was in the in the ark, I can provide for you. I have the provisions for you. Every day I'm going to provide a provision for you. And not only that, you know that 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 um rod that is in that ark that, that, that mercy seat covers and which now I have turned into the throne of grace. Well you know what? That means that I left and I shed my blood. I went straight to to stand and sit beside the Father, but now I went expediently away so that I could send you the comforter. I could send you the Holy Spirit so that the Holy Spirit could lead God and direct you and show you truth and reveal truth unto you. So it's like Amen, amen. Yeah, it looks like we lost. I don't know why we have problems with one block. It's like we lost here and Robin again. It looks like we lost. I don't know why we have problems with one block. It's like we have problems with one block. truly blessed. Amen. With the word that is forth and everything. I um, hope you were too. We're going to probably do this again. Amen. Um, I know she can't hear me <laughs> and everything. I just checked to see whether she's online. She's still online, so but her phone is going mute and everything. But anyway, we're talking about the throne of grace, amen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need, amen. So I want to encourage you to to go back and research these scriptures on your own. Rev. Robin, you back with me? I want I want to encourage you to go and research these scriptures mm-hmm. on your own and everything like that, and and just listen to what God is saying and speaking to the people of God. Amen. Because He's definitely speaking. Amen. We are almost out of time anyway, and uh, let's see if we can do something better than this. Um, I don't think I have this problem when I do Zoom, and uh, maybe we'll do something different. Maybe we'll do something different and everything like that, so I'll get a chance to talk to her later and see if we can get this word out, especially when I talk, she started talking about the Temple of Robin. It's very good. 
um, to come to the, the, the tabernacle and, uh, and the, t- the tabernacle tent and where everything has a, had a purpose and a, a place and all that kind of stuff. So um, we may have to do something a little different, and um, we'll do that. We'll do that, and um, God will get the glory as we begin to, to talk on this thing. So we're going to go ahead and end right now. Um, I don't, like I said, I think that she, I'm not able to hear her and everything like that, but uh, what's the thing that she said was really a blessing to us. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. Uh, Father God, we just want to thank you for your grace and your mercy and the things that you're doing in my life, God. Thank you, God, for this being God in our life, God. We thank you for all your love that you have for us, God, the, the love that you have willing to give your son and the son that you willing to give us life. So we appreciate you, God. We pray that it, this broadcast has been a blessing to someone. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.